Hi everyone. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a different video. It's going to be kind of an overview of, of Pipeline. Um, I've got quite a few questions about um, doing booleans inside of Houdini, then how do you use this uh, in a CG Pipeline. Um, so this isn't going to be step by step because these step, most of these steps you should know. Um, but I want to go through the entire process of how to do this um, utilizing Houdini. Um, I did do uh, a retopology pass uh, in in Quadraw, so I'll show you that. I'm not going to go through the Quadraw process. You can, I'm sure you've seen it. And there's a million videos out there on it. Um, this is specifically going to be just about kind of like asset workflow. So I've got this just little diagram here. So the overall CG pipeline, um, you first, you typically start out with a sculpt or a concept mesh. Sometimes this is provided um, by a studio or a production facility, or you're doing it yourself. Um, this is also called like your high res mesh. Um, this usually doesn't contain UVs. It's got basically all of your detail um, that you want on the object. So if I go back to Houdini, so this would be a high res concept sculpt. So if I go to wireframe, you can see it's really bad topology um, and it's super high res. And if we go over and look at our poly count, um, not of that, of this, um, you can see we're hovering around 830,000 polygons, which is way too high. Um, unless you're using Nanite or something like that, um, the, which is a, a different story. Um, what I'm going to show you is basically an overall PBR uh, pipeline, typically that you would use for games or um, props or something. Um, the only real difference here is, if I go back to this diagram, um, Typically for games, your your projected textures, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, for games, you're going to use normal maps. So for film and TV, you're going to get displacement, um, which is a height map. Um, for film and TV, you can also use normal maps. It just depends on distance to camera um, and whether it's like a hero object or something like that. All right, so we'll go back here. So say we're we're in Houdini, we've got our this is our boolean object, right? You can see that there's there's engons everywhere all over it because we don't care in this mesh we don't care about topology, it's all about the look. Um, so I just wanted to get this really nice look. So what I do is I just use a stash node. Um, and you could use a cache node or an object merge, but basically a stash node um, is like a little cache. So you hook it up to your, your last node of the chain, you hit stash input, and then now this object contains um, this geo. Uh, so that's all I did down here is I made a stash so you can see. my boolean object which is garbage topology um, next up I'm just making a VDB from polygons and what this does is basically voxelizes the mesh um, and a cool pro cool thing that happens during this process is if we go back to our stash node you can see it's very very subtle um, but especially in this polygon right here there's going to be a normal issue because uh, this just isn't a planar polygon but what's cool is that it's gone now um, through this VDB process so sometimes you'll get artifacts uh, from the boolean process and this is how you can get rid of them um, and the the everything is dealt with this voxel size so I'll just do this just to show you so if I do a VDB from polygons and I go over here. This is what you're initially going to get. Um, so then you'll just go through and figure out what resolution you want. And I can tell this is too much because there's that, that triangle there. Um, so I'm just going to make it a little less 
resolution and you can see that's gone it does blur it a little bit but that's totally fine um, it's not much it's almost completely imperceptible I mean if we really if we go from there to there um, it's it's not a big deal um, so back over here then after our VDB we just do a convert VDB and this will convert it back to polygons so we do a convert to polygons um, and you can even mess around with the ISO value here uh, I'm not going to do it but you can shrink it and grow it um, there also is an ad adaptivity so if you can turn this on you can start to get the beginnings of, of retopology uh, but I did a manual retopology so we don't have to worry with that then we um, can either retopologize inside of Houdini which I still don't like to do um, it's the one thing that I don't like uh, there is a tool called topo build um, this top of build is basically the is quad draw um, I think I've just used quad draw for just too many years um, so if my is available that's where I usually do my retopology um, so then from there we will go over to substance painter Uh, well, that starts up. I'll just show you the low res. The uh, the low res. Um, and you can see the topology is definitely not perfect at all. Um, and I just did automatic UVs to be just be sloppy with it, um, just to show you how pretty easy this is to. To deal with um, so now in substance painter I'll just go to new grab my low is you can see no real details or anything um, then we're gonna go over textures or texture set texture set settings um, load in our high res. Just going to use all the defaults. Hit bake selected textures. Any mode. And here is my baked object. Um, very quick, easy to do. Um, hopefully that wasn't all just too boring uh, for everyone. I just wanted to make sure everybody has a good idea of just the overview of working with an asset and how to get it in and out of Houdini. Um, you can see with the smart material on here, very quick, um, easy workflow. Uh, one quick note that I left out was how to get your geometry um, outside of Houdini um, and this is a really quick easy way to do this um, you can use a ROP of course um, there's a limbic ROPs FBX output ROPs um, you can totally use these there's a geometry output um, but from day to day for the most part I'll just right click on the last node so if this is the object that I want to, to export right click save geometry um, go into your file list here pick OBJ FBX whatever you want um, set the file name hit accept and then hit accept and that will export your geometry um, so just wanted to add that little last note in there um, to avoid confusion thanks everyone